Good afternoon. What we will be tackling this afternoon is the concept of layers. Uh, what exactly is layers? Layers is the mechanism within AutoCAD which is used to organize our drawing. Our drawing consists of multiple elements. Uh, we have graphical elements which is predominantly the drawing. Uh, we also have non-graphical elements such as dimensions, notations, hatch patterns, uh, tables, which add body and information to the drawing itself. Uh, in order for us to organize a drawing, we require a system that will allow us to place these elements in such a way that when they are not required or when they are more conveniently uh, hidden, uh, we can do that very much on the fly. This is what the layer system is about. Uh, we will be walking through various portions of the layer system in this video. Uh, we will in start by introducing the layer properties manager and creating layers. We will then take a look at uh, changing and assigning properties to the various layers. After that we will take a look at the layer states and then we will end up with the utilities required to take objects and elements out of one uh, layer onto another layer. So with that said, let us begin. On the home tab, we have the layers palette. In the palette, we have the layers properties manager. When I click on the button for the layer property manager, the layer properties manager is accessed. The initial layer that is always in um, that is always on uh, standby is the zero layer. The zero layer can <coughs> not be deleted. The zero layer should not be modified. The zero layer is our standard that we uh, base all of our other layers from. So in reality what we are doing is we are creating copies of the zero layer and then adjusting those copies as opposed to the original. On our left hand side uh, we have three buttons which are grayed out, which consists of property filters. Uh, we will be talking about those in the coming, in coming videos. Um, the middle buttons are by far the most important. Starting from the left, going to the right, we have our uh, new layer button, which can also be Alt-N. Our new layer frozen in viewports, again discussed in, uh, in upcoming videos. We can delete any layers that we do not need, and we can also set any layer that we want as being current. The button that we will be using uh, at this particular point is the new, um, the new layer button. So I'm going to click on it four times. So one, two, three, and four. By doing that, what I'm doing is I'm taking the zero layer and I've created four identical copies. Those copies are the layers that now reside within this drawing. Our first step is uh, property changes. Everything that incorporates and on these columns are properties for a specific layer. Uh, one of the most important things to do in order to ensure that the drawing becomes as user friendly as possible is we always rename the layers. We never leave layers as layer 1, layer 2, layer 3 we tend to give layers descriptive names in order for whoever else will be using the drawing apart from ourselves to allow them to understand and to allow them to know what is on that layer. To change the layer names it's actually fairly simple and there are multiple ways of doing it. I can select right mouse button over that layer and then click uh, uh, rename layers. I can also select and then hit the F2 key, or even easier, click once on the name of the layer and click again to allow us to activate and rename it. I'm going to start renaming my layers. I'm going to call the first one Circles. Then I'm going to click on the second layer and name it rectangles the next layer click and click again call it lines and then the last layer 
All I'm going to do is I'm going to type in MISC for miscellaneous. Okay. What I've done now is I've affected change to the first property of uh, my layer. And that change is I've renamed all of the layers. If I want my layers to be in alphabetical order, all I require to do is just click the name uh, column and it will automatically readjust itself and reorder themselves in alphabetical order. Our next property to be changed uh, will be the color. All the colors are assigned uh, as a, a standard white or black. Uh, even though the swatch indicates that it's uh, black, if I hover over it, it says that the color is white. The reason for that is my background. If my background was uh, black, then these swatches would be white. If my background was white, then of course these swatches are black. Uh, I would like to change the colors. To do that, I'm just going to simply click on the swatch and it brings up the select color palette. Uh, AutoCAD supports 64 million colors. Each color is subdivided into three particular categories. The category that we will be using most often is the index colors. However, we also have a true color mixer similar to a word uh, to a image processor and for print bureaus we also have the color books which support every single uh, color cast, uh, classification uh, available. Uh, as I said before, we're going to stick with the index colors. So I'm going to click on index colors and I'm going to assign the following. Uh, for circles, I'm going to assign it the color red. So I'm going to select red, click OK, and the swatch turns red. For lines, I'm going to assign it, say, a, a yellow color. Okay. For rectangles, we will assign it as a green. And then for the miscellaneous, uh, I'm going to select something out of the index itself. I'll just pick a turquoise such as that, click OK, and now I have my colors selected. There we go, I have now created two property changes. My next property change is the line types. Line types will all be defaulted to continuous. Uh, I'm going to um, change those to various line types. In order to do that, I'm going to select the word continuous and it will bring up the line type dialog box. As you can see on the dialog box itself, we only have a single line style or a line type and that's continuous. And that's because that's the only one that's on our start from scratch template. We're going to load three additional line types which we're going to be using within our layer structure. To do that, if we take a look at the bottom three buttons, uh, the second button on the right is load. We're going to click on load and this will load the AutoCAD library. These are the line types library. If you take a few seconds, scroll down, you'll see all of the line types that are available to you. For people that become very interested in uh, the workings of the software itself, they are able to also create their own library and their own line types. Uh, for our purposes, we're just going to select from the AutoCAD or the ACAD library. So I'm going to just scroll down. As I scroll down, I'm going to pick the center. So I'm going to select, left click, select the center. I'm going to scroll down a slightly more. And I'm going to holding down control, the control key, and then click on the word hidden. Scroll down a little bit more. And there is the phantom holding down control once again. Click on phantom and then click OK. When I click that, those selected line types get loaded up into the main dialog box. We are already uh, on the circle layer. We would like to then transfer the, con the continuous to a center uh, line type. So I'm just going to select center and click OK. And then Therefore, the, cent the center line type is associated to circles. Uh, we were going to leave uh, lines as continuous. Uh, for rectangle, we're going to assign hidden. And then last but not least, for miscellaneous, we'll assign phantom. Click OK one last time. 
uh, we're going to make one additional uh, change to the layers and that is we are going to associate uh, the line weights, the thicknesses of the lines by changing the line weight in the line weight column. I'm going to click on the word default and this brings up the line weights dialog box. For a center we're going to keep two various standards. Uh, centers, center lines are usually thin so uh, they're usually 0.25 to 0.3. I'm going to use 0.3 for that one. Click OK so that's assigned. Uh, for lines, lines are slightly thicker. They are usually 0.6. We'll select that. Um, rectangles, hidden lines again, same thing. We're going to select that, 0.3. And for phantom, uh, we're going to be a little bit uh, off the beaten path. We're going to see what happens when we assign it um, an illogical type of line weight. Uh, I'll assign 2 millimeters and click OK. Alright, so now we have pretty much affected all of our property changes. Uh, the last thing we're going to do is to set, we're going to close the dialog box. So the dialog box has been closed. Uh, to see that all of the line uh, types and the, li and the layers have been uh, produced, I'm going to go to this field right here, click the down arrow, and as you can see, all of my layers have been produced. With our layer structure created, we are now going to see how we place elements, or in this case, um, drawing elements, onto the layers. Uh, in order to place anything onto a layer, we have to actually activate the layer. To activate the layer, we click on the field arrow. Uh, this will expose all the layers. We will start by clicking on circles. Uh, I'm going to click on the circle command, and I'm just going to draw myself three circles anywhere on my screen. As you can see, because it is on the circles layer, it has a different color, in this case it's the red, <coughs> and it will also have the center line line type. Well, let's make another change. Uh, let's click on lines, and we'll use a line command. And as we click, there we are creating our lines. Now, uh, yellow Unfortunately, it's a little washed out in the gray background, so what we can do is we can, on the fly, also change the colors. Just click on the pull down once more, click on the swatch, associated to lines, and we will pick something a little bit more appropriate for that background. Let's pick dark blue. So I'm going to click on dark blue, click OK, and anything on that layer, as you can see, goes to dark blue. Let's change our rectangles, and I know that green, this type of green is not going to uh, show very brightly on the, um, on the background, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to click, and I'm going to associate, uh, let me see here, we will associate uh, magenta, so we'll associate magenta, and now I'm going to click on my rectangle tool, and Rectangles, sorry. So, rectangles, that's better. We'll delete that one. And there we go. So, a couple of rectangles. And again, as you can see, the uh, line type and the color uh, associated with that layer is displayed. Our last one is a miscellaneous. Uh, and for miscellaneous also, we will change it just ever so slightly, just to give it a little bit more uh, clarity, so we'll do that. And for miscellaneous, I don't really care what I'm going to draw, I'll draw maybe a rectangle here, <coughs> a circle here, and maybe a polyline, say over there. Okay, so um, by just in just changing the layer, uh, what we have here is we have the different uh, objects on different layers. Uh, the objects reflect all of the properties that are incorporated within those layers. Now, if we quickly do a a quick scan, <coughs> uh, the 
line types have changed. Um, so we have a center line, we have a continuous line, we have a phantom line, and of course we have a hidden line. The colors have changed. <coughs> we have red, blue, um, turquoise, and magenta. Uh, however, we did, as you recall, change the line weight, the thickness. Uh, if we do a quick scan of our um, drawing right now, uh, all the line weights pretty much look the same. Uh, now, the reason for that is is that by default, um, everything is set to a hairline line weight. If we wanted to display what the actual line weights were, if we go down to the bottom um, and we hover over this button, this is the line weight toggle. If the line weight toggle is not on, you just go to the bottom extreme right corner under customization, click on the double on the three uh, bars, and then make sure that line weight has a check mark on it. So if it doesn't have a check mark, you place a check mark and it'll expose that button. Okay, so now what exactly does this do? Well, we know that we've assigned line weights to all of the objects. When I click, it actually shows us what the actual line weights of all the objects are. The line weight toggle is a, pre, uh, is a preview. It will allow you to see if those lines which you have placed are, are appropriate for the drawings themselves. Um, we can leave the line weight toggle on, for example, and as we've seen right here, the uh, miscellaneous layer we've had a we've had it uh, assigned to a very inappropriate size of line weight. So what we would like to do is we would like to adjust it. The way we adjust it is we go up to the layer properties manager again. We click on the layer properties manager. It exposes all the layers. Now I'm just going to simply move this out of the way so we can actually see what is going to happen. So by moving this to the side, just like so, I'm going to click on the two millimeter line weight that we assigned to miscellaneous, and we're going to give it something a bit more appropriate. So I'm going to change it to, rather than two millimeters, I'm going to change it to uh, 0.25 millimeters. Select, click OK, and in real time it changes. Okay? So that is how we end up uh, adding um, we end up adding elements in this case uh, drawing elements geometric elements onto layers. Uh, our next step is how we actually affect uh, what is known as states. States in AutoCAD consist of three primary controls. Those controls being visibility, which is the little light bulb, uh, freeze, which is the sun and thaw symbol, and of course the lock symbol. We're going to take a look at what these symbols do. So we'll take the light bulb symbol. The light bulb symbol is for visibility. Uh, let us take for example if we do not want the magenta rectangles to be on. We can click on the little light bulb and they will turn those off. Let's say we don't want the blue lines to be on. Same thing. Um, let's say the circles we want to be off. We have that also. So the prime purpose of turning uh, layers on and off is just to allow a less busy uh, screen to be on hand and makes it a lot easier for you to work on your drawing. So you can turn <coughs> the layers on and off anytime you want. Now what is the next one? The next state is the freeze state. So the freeze state, let's say we'll do the same thing. I'm going to freeze the rectangles and I'm going to also freeze the lines and freeze the circles. 
Now, what is the main difference here? <coughs> uh, they seem to seems to be doing the exact same thing that uh, the light bulb does. Uh, there is a huge difference, though. The light bulb affects visibility. So, when we turn the light bulb off, it's as if that we've just turned the light off, but the information is still there. We just can't see it. When we click on the freeze, uh, it not only turns the light off, but also takes the information away. The database is temporarily unloaded of the information that was on that particular layer. So in, in theory, AutoCAD does not think that anything that is on the rectangle layer exists. It doesn't even think that the rectangle layer exists at this point. So that is how what is freeze uh, in a nutshell, actually. Uh, one of the ways that we can also show uh, how the difference between layers and, um, or excuse me, how um, the uh, on off and the freeze work. I'll do a quick little demonstration. Just start a brand new drawing. Okay. F7 to turn. So I'm just going to go and I'm going to create two layers. <clears throat> so I'm going to create two layers, and I'm not going to worry about renaming them. I'm just going to change the names, or excuse me, the colors. The first color will be red. Second color, uh, we'll make it blue. Okay. I'm going to click to close, and then I'm going to make the red layer current. I will create a circle right in the middle. I will then change my layer to layer 2. I will create two rectangles, one here, and one here. Okay, I'm going to hit my view extents, and as we know, the view extents fills in the screen completely. Uh, I'm just going to zoom out slightly and hit the view extents one more time, and once again, we know that it will fill the screen completely with whatever is on this, whatever is on the screen. I'm going to go up to my layers and I'm going to make my red layer current, go back, and then I'm going to turn the visibility off of the blue layer. Okay, I'm going to zoom out just a tad and then do the exact same thing, zoom extents. So what should happen theoretically is that the circle fills in the entire screen. But as we can see, it does not. Even when we zoom in to try to fill it in and then adjusted by hitting the zoom extents, what it's going to do is it is going to pretty much take its place in space. The reason, as we said, when we turn off a layer, we are simply turning the visibility on. There's still information that exists here and there. Okay, so let's turn that back on. Let's do the same little experiment, but this time we'll do it with the freeze. So we're going to freeze the two rectangles. Let's try the zoom extents. Now everything fills in. Why? Because AutoCAD thinks that whatever is on the blue layer does not exist simply because we have frozen them out. So they're still there. We haven't deleted or, or destroyed anything. We have just frozen them. So what that means is that AutoCAD only thinks that the circle now exists. So if I click on the freeze layer again and do my zoom extents, I get everything back to normal. Okay, let's go back to our drawing. So on our drawing, um, we have discussed the on off. We have also now taken a look at what freeze does. What does lock do? Well, lock principally plays on the order of operations. In the order of operations within AutoCAD, we have three steps. We have selection, enter, then we have application, enter, and then we have finally execution, which ends the command. What the lock state does is that it eliminates or hampers the first step, the selection. So for example, if I click on the lock tool on the rectangles, and if I click on the lock tool on the circles, and we leave that, 
what we have done is that we've made the circles and the rectangles unselectable. How do we prove that? Well, when I click on erase and type in all, hit enter, everything other than the circles and the rectangles get selected. If we take a look at the command line, uh, it shows that 16 objects were found, uh, but 7 were on a locked layer. So in reality, we have 23 objects here. We can prove that by simply turning the locks off again and doing the same little experiment, erase all. We hit enter and we have all of our objects selected. So in this case, 16 objects were found, all 16 were selected. In the prior case, 16 objects were found, uh, but because seven were on a locked layer, they ended up not being selected. So this is what the locked layer does. When we click on the lock, what we end up having is that everything that is on the lock layer cannot be selected. So if we click and lock all of our layers, like so, and then we do a, an erase all, when we hit enter, we will, be, we will have found 16 objects, but zero objects will be selected uh, because 16 objects are all on locked layer. Therefore, they are non-selectable. If something is non-selectable, what that means is that we will, that nothing uh, can happen to it. Because it, can't, it has to be selected before we can modify, uh, a locked layer will not allow any selection of any objects on it. What would be the purpose of the locked and the locked layer, um, primarily for uh, management purposes. If you do not want certain objects on certain layers to be selected and then modified or moved, uh, then we would place them on a locked layer. A much more practical aspect to use the lock would be, for example, on a title block. The title block would be on a locked layer, therefore, if things were selected on that drawing, the title block would stay in its original position. So that is the uh, layer states. Our next, our next section is how we take objects from one layer and then transfer them onto another layer. Welcome back. There are multiple ways to change an object's uh, positional uh, position in the layer structure. Uh, the main ways, however, are actually very simple. One is simply selection and then assigning the correct layer to those particular selected objects. Uh, the second way is using the match layer tool. Uh, the selection and then changing to the uh, layer that is required uh, is actually more efficient of the two because we can also assign various uh, objects to layers that may not even be on the drawing at, at that point. The match layer has the same functionality. Uh, there are a couple of additional steps though we have to follow. So let's take a look at how this works. So here we have a bunch of, of objects on various layers. I'm going to turn off the toggle just to make it a little easier to see. So um, case in point, I want to take these three circles and I would like to transfer them to the miscellaneous layer. So I've selected them. I haven't done anything other than just simply selected them. And then I'm going to go upstairs to the pull down. Okay, I want to assign these to the miscellaneous layer. So I'm going to click on miscellaneous and then hit escape. Okay. Uh, I'm going to uh, crossing window select these two objects here. And I want to assign these to the circles layer. Click the down arrow, click on the circles layer hit escape and we're done. Okay. Um, let's take a look at selecting say the following. We're going to select this, this, this one, and this one. 
So these are all on multiple different layers, and we want to bring them all into the uh, rectangle layer. So they're now they're on the rectangle layer, just like so. So this is probably one of the more efficient ways of changing objects from one layer to another. We select. After we select, uh, we go to uh, the pull down and then select the layer that we want them to be on. So the uh, process is extremely simple. We do not have to click on any commands. We just simply go highlight, left click, highlight, left click, highlight, left click, highlight, left click. After we've done that, we can go upstairs and then click on whichever layer we want them to be on. Just like so. The second way is to use the match layer tool. We're going to click on the match layer tool. So the match layer tool gives us a pick box. However, all the different layer selection tools are available to you. Okay. So what I want to do here is I want to select, say, those objects. So I've selected those objects using the crossing window. I have nothing else to select. Hit enter. Now I want to put all of those all objects on the rectangle layer. So I'm going to go, I'm going to pick an object that's already on the rectangle layer, for example this one, and it will automatically bring it there. Let's do it again. So match objects. This time I'm going to select all the way there. Okay. Nothing else to select. Enter. And now I'm going to say select miscellaneous and it'll send it to the miscellaneous. Now let's say for example even though we do have it, and in fact what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete that one. Okay, So let's say we want to use the match layer tool but uh, the layer that we want there's no object here that has um, that is on the layer that we want. No matter. We just click on the match layer. Once again, select everything we want to move. We're going to move all these. Enter. Now what we want to do is we want to move them to the circle layers. We don't have a circle layer object here. However, if we go down to the command line and click on the word name, it will bring us a nice little dialog box. And within that dialog box it will show all the layers that we now have. I'm going to select circle and then just simply click OK and it transfers everything to that particular layer. So in a nutshell that's how we take objects from one layer to another layer and vice versa. What you're going to find is that as you're drawing within AutoCAD there will be situations that you will be placing objects on layers that they should not be on there. So these utilities make it extremely easy to actually replace the objects where they belong. And with that, thank you for listening, and have a good evening.